Hello, welcome back everybody to another exciting episode of Rust. Today I'm playing with the Polish Mario and we're bringing you a top 10 list of tips and tricks to surviving your Rust experience. Now these top 10 are in no particular order, but make sure that you take note as some are more important than others. So let's go ahead and get started with number 10. When gathering wood, make sure to look for the big piles as they tend to give you much more wood than the average tree. This starting rock will produce 7 wood per swing. Using a stone hatchet, you'll produce the exact same thing, this time only much faster per swing. If you get the chance to create a real hatchet, like the one I'm going to show you here, you'll get 10x wood per swing, which is not too bad. However, the ideal harvesting tool of choice is going to be none other than the pickaxe. If the pickaxe gives you 20 times wood per swing, thus giving you the most amount of wood per swing per pile. Each pile can tend up to four to five swings with the pickaxe, thus giving you the amount of wood of 80 to 100 uh, amounts of wood per pile. Number nine, the black rocks are really good if you're looking for metal ore, which will of course turn into metal fragments later on. Number eight, these are the white rocks and the white rocks or you know grayish rocks these are really good for gathering sulfur so if you're looking to make um, gunpowder you will need sulfur so these are the rocks that you're going to want to explore and gather first number seven okay, hey Polish, maybe another... maybe you can answer this question for for everybody how do i get metal sure. fragments metal fragments you use a furnace for you have furnace. to Smelt, or, no, well, yeah, smelt is a good word for it. Um, smelt the metal ore in a furnace using wood as the um, fire mechanism, I guess. Okay. And the furnace creates the byproduct uh, from metal ore, which are the metal fragments. Sulfur ore creates sulfur, and then the wood creates charcoal. All of those three elements are used for gunpowder, and then eventually ammunition. And the first ammunition that you'll probably want to create is a 9mm ammo, because th that's the easiest to make, offhand. Alright. Number 6. Hey, uh, Polish, did, did you mention how to make gunpowder? Because that's one of the other top, top 10. Ah, yes. Gunpowder is used with the uh, charcoal and sulfur. You need two charcoal and two sulfur to make a single, I guess, box of gunpowder, which then is used for mainly ammunition from what I've seen, as well as probably explosives and um, explosive charges. Grenades. Use explosives. Grenades as well. So anything that goes boom. Number five. Uh, so putting on clothes allows you to not be cold. I think I mentioned that in one of my other videos. However, um, it also slows your calorie intake, which is really nice. Now, if you combine this with a campfire, you can actually sit inside your little hut, and, and, and you're naked, by the way, Polish, yeah. Put some clothes on so that you're not cold. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a, oh, it's chilly out here. Combining that with a campfire, you will then be able to survive a lot longer without having to consume any food. So if you're very low on food, the best thing to do is put on some clothes and to start a campfire for the night. And then of course, uh, when it's day, you'll want to go out and gather more food. Number four. All right, all right. So um, so one of the other things here on the top 10 list of things to, uh, things you may or may not know is what to craft, what do I craft first to survive in this game? And we have a breakdown for you, and it goes like this. One of the first things that you're going to want to build is going to be a shelter and a door to go on the shelter, a storage box to keep your this... stuff in, uh, a campfire, and a sleeping bag. And let's let's break that down a little bit here. So the shelter, as you know, uh, do we have any wood? Here we are. I have placed down a very basic, very easy shelter. Ah, but when it gets dark, what do we do? Well, you create a campfire. This is done the same way. You need wood to create the campfire. You put it on your hotbar, find a green, you know, silhouette, 
and click OK. Uh, the campfires already come with five pieces of wood, so you can turn it on um, right, at, right after you craft it. How about a door? Do we need a door? Our, yes, we do. So, a shelter is great and everything, but what if you have some things and you're near the spawn area? A fellow player may come and rob you, kill you, take your stuff. So we want to prevent that. So also with wood, we create a door, which I have just now created. And here we have a complete shelter that keeps you protected from the elements as well as other players. Here now, to make sure that you respawn here uh, in the event that you die, you want to create something called a sleeping bag. This uses cloth and it can be placed down similar to the storage shed. Um, just find a place on the ground that is green and put it down. So I've just put it down here. The only thing that you can do with the uh, sleeping bag is pick it up. So you can take it with you and put it down in another you know, house or shelter along the way to your final destination. And from here on out, uh, you'll be able to spawn here in the event that you die. And I believe every five minutes you can actually do uh, a spawn um, command that will actually bring you back here, which is kind of nice as well. Now you can't sleep. The you can't sleep in the sleeping bag, however, but um, um, it is there for uh, if you do get killed or if you want to respawn back here. The timer is actually four minutes. It, after you spawn here, you have uh, f basically a four minute cooldown timer until you can spawn here again. So if you die within four minutes, you will spawn in the spawn area. Mm, so let me put down the last thing in here that you will need to survive. And this is a wood storage box. All right, so the wood storage box comes with 12 spots and you can put whatever you want. Unfortunately there's no lock on it so anyone uh, that can gain access to it will have access to it. So if you were to put this box outside of the shelter then anyone would be able to pillage it. Number three. Here's a can of tuna. You'll come in here and you'll see the different colored crates. Now these are wood crates. Just some cloth. So some in bullets. these buildings, uh, there are crates found in this room as well as upstairs. And there are different colors crates, wood, green, and red. Here we are. Here's a green one. Uh, so we'll see what's in this green case here. Uh, looks like we just got ammunition in that one. Alright, so we got another one of these blue cases. The blue cases. Wow. I don't recall seeing a blue case before. This might be new. What's in here? Oh, mods. That's very nice. Number two. The weapons. So check this out. I have a lot of people ask, what are the little squares down here on my weapon and what are they for? Well, that's a great question. Those little squares down there represent how many attachments that your weapon can hold. If your weapon doesn't have any attachments, like this one right here, there won't have there won't be any squares available. And sometimes that's the luck of the draw when you craft that item. Uh, sometimes they'll have attachments and sometimes they won't. But the easy way to to, uh, to figure out whether or not you have an attachment or if you can put an attachment on your weapon is the little squares on the bottom of the left-hand corner of your weapon. And it's really simple to add the attachment. All you have to do is grab the attachment, drag it over to the weapon, let go, and that attachment will automatically be added to the weapon. And then basically once you hit the F5, you'll see now it has the light flashlight mod that I just put on it. It also has the, the holo sight as well. So 
can you take the what can can you take the attachments off no you cannot so make sure that you choose the right attachments that you want to put on your weapon before you put on it because you can't detach them and the available attachments are suppressors scopes sights flashlights and lasers as far as I know yeah I think you're right I have the ability to craft a laser sight a silencer and a holographic sight I'm sure there are scopes but we just haven't found them and number one alright one other thing that uh, could be pretty beneficial too to new players as well um, do we have a, a console that you can pull up you hit F1 on your keyboard it'll pull up the console as you can see here and in here you can actually type some commands now if you're pretty low on FPS and your game is running a little bit slow something uh, one of the things here that you can that will be beneficial to you is to turn off the grass so what you would do is you would type in grass oops, grass which is g-r-a-s-s -S dot o-n space false and as you can see it now says grass false now if I want to turn it back on it would be grass dot on true and now you can see and now you can see that uh, all the grass is here it looks like they actually had a new patch recently because the grass looks really really nice now uh, before it uh, in my previous videos you probably saw the way the grass looked this actually looks really nice now and it, um, it's a big improvement from what it was let's turn the grass back off here for me I, I kinda like it better with the grass off so we're gonna hit F1 do grass dot on space false and as you can see that turned off all my grass again uh, something else that you can do too if you're stuck and you uh, can't get out and you don't have an admin online you can hit F1 again and bring up the console and type the word suicide that will actually kill you you will lose all of your loot that you had so try not to get stuck uh, but it does give you the ability to die and respawn and then if you have the ability to go back and try to find your body hopefully your body's there and you have the ability to grab your suitcase with all your stuff in it and one last thing too is um, if you have a friend and they want to have you join their server and you can't find their server what you do is you start the game and uh, in the title screen here you see here then what you'll want to do is you'll want to hit F1 again and in the console you'll want to type net.connect space and then the IP address and the port number and that'll allow you to directly connect to the server as well. Ah yes, the famous Loot Santa. Alright, where's our Loot Santa box? There it is. Loot Santa box. Let's see what's in the Loot Santa box. Nothing. Let's leave some stuff for Loot Santa. I'm gonna leave all my blueprints. This uh, lovely container here was left by our Loot Santa on the server. We're not gonna mention anybody's names. We call him Loot Santa. He comes and drops some off in the uh, in the occupied container here and uh, leaves us uh, treasures and of course we go out and hunt and do stuff and leave more treasures for him as well. Loot Santa is a good Santa. So if you're listening Loot Santa and you're watching this video we thank you. We appreciate your service to our country.